Okay, hello. My name is Pete Pizzatello. I'm uh, part of the product marketing group here at CAST. And I wanted to thank you uh, for, for all taking your time to join us today for today's webcast. So I'd like to welcome our speakers. Uh, today, as I mentioned, we have two speakers, uh, Justin Sorelli and Lev Lazokin. Justin is from uh, Russell Reynolds Associates. He's a member of the Financial Services and Information Officer Practice. Uh, he focuses on operations and technology leaders uh, within the asset management, insurance, banking, and capital markets. Justin has significant experience recruiting global CIOs within the financial service, retail, e-commerce, and several other industries. Prior to Russell Reynolds, Justin was the product manager for uh, Kronos. He's also director of consulting for uh, Staff, which is a software company, and a management consultant with KPMG. Our second speaker is Level Zook, and he's the Executive Vice President of Strategy and Market Development for CAS. Uh, his responsibilities for CAS include strategy, thought leadership, and product marketing worldwide. Prior to CAS, Lev was a Director of Global SME Marketing, and his previous experience includes working for the Corporate Executive Board of McKinsey and & Company and the Mitre Corporation. So I'd like to uh, welcome Justin and Lev today. Thank you, Pete, Lev, Danielle, and the cast team for inviting me here today to discuss the evolution of the CIO and also give some pointers to the group on how to get to the CIO role and how to hold on to the role once you get there, which is almost just as important, right? There's a huge demand for CIOs in the market today. Um, we've seen an increase in our CIO searches by about 40% this year alone, and the number of technology and operations roles in financial services retail, and healthcare has doubled. And when you think about this, this is occurring when financial services hiring on the business side is significantly down overall. So it makes it even more impressive to see these types of numbers. What we want to focus on today is what CIOs were measured on in terms of leadership and competencies in the past, how that is shifting today, and how you should be expanding or enhancing your skill set to get to the CIO seat. Interestingly, I think what we've found is that the skill set that gets you to the CIO role is not what is going to keep you in the actual seat itself. So here's a, a high-level evolution of some of the key competencies of the CIO then and now. As previously stated, we've seen an increase in CIO searches by about 40%, right? So why is that? One major reason is that CIOs have been asking for a seat at the table and, frankly, demanding that seat. And when they get their seat at the table, most CIOs then turn to the business and ask, what do you want me to deliver? They don't seem to realize that a seat at the table means you're going from McDonald's order taker to business partners, right? So what does this mean? CIOs no longer can be seen or view themselves as a technologist first. They need to be seen as a business person first who happens to be an expert in technology, people, and process. But it's not the CIO's fault that they act this way, or anyone to act this way. They've had to act this way to reactively work with the business, because the reason they've been successful and the reason why people are successful in the IT organization is because of the skill set we see in the left-hand column here. CIOs, in terms of the reactive piece, used to measure themselves on things like on time and on budget. However, business leaders don't care if the CIO is on time and on budget if the project they lead did not have the business impact desired. So CIOs now are being measured off of business impacts and revenue growth. So think about it. You can no longer hear a CIO say, I was successful, but the business went bankrupt, right? There's no separation between IT success and business success. They're tied forever now. So compounding this proactive business leader skill set is the fact that technology leaders, and specifically CIOs, are being asked to lead innovation in, in their companies. So CIOs are now the experts in terms of in terms of uh, in terms of customer experience, in terms of mobility, in terms of how you productize and monetize data for companies. They're being asked to be strategic thought leaders in the business not technology leaders, but thought leaders. So we surveyed some of the, the top CIOs, specifically in, in financial services, and here's what they're focusing on. I thought it would be interesting for the group to hear. So 
some consistent priorities across organizations and what they're focusing on in terms of driving increased revenue. The first one is the simplification of application portfolios. So CIOs and heads of operations are looking at their application portfolio to decrease, decrease costs, but also align their spending with the business needs. If you have an application portfolio that's too complex, it strangles innovation. If you have CIOs that are too delivery focused, what they end up doing is delivering a hodgepodge of solutions but aren't able to bring it together, and that ends up, again, strangling innovation for an organization. So there's a big concentration on the simplification of their application portfolio. The second piece is that CIOs are being asked to lead business and process reengineering efforts. So CIOs are ones that look across an institution and look for ways to optimize not just their workforce, but the business workforce to better provide customer service or customer experience. The next one is on innovation and business growth, right? So um, CIOs are investing in a lot of consumer-facing technologies, determining how their organizations will interact with the customer in a more innovative and direct manner, and how to drive new, new and improved revenue lines. So business growth and innovation is a big piece too, but it needs to be enabled by the first two items. You, the other one is, is something you're going to hear a lot about and, and everyone's talking about this, these days, but it's big data and digital. So companies are realizing that data and information are its key assets to unlocking company performance and also empowering the company in terms of risk management. And that's the last one is how does a CIO help balance business growth with risk mitigation transparency so they don't end up on the cover of the Wall Street Journal. So if you look at this slide, you'll see that a lot of what a CIO is measured off then is now changing to more pro proactive, strategic, and business-focused items. 